Today we want to have a closer look at the LMP2 category and why every single car is nowadays an Orica 07. So let's go back to the year 2008 when the two racing teams Speedy Racing and Siba Automotive joined to form the new Rebellion Racing Team, named after the Swiss watch manufacturer Rebellion. The team competed in the LMP2 category with Lola chassis. In 2009 they switched to the stronger LMP1 category. In 2012 Lola was bankrupt and for the Swiss team it was hard to get spare parts for their Lola B1260 LMP1. They got into contact with the successful French prototype manufacturer Orica at the end of 2013 and negotiated a deal to develop a new LMP1 prototype for the 2014 season. That was important because the chassis rules for LMP1 changed for 2014. So while LMP2 cars could still be 2 meter wide, LMP1 cars now had a maximum of 1.9 meters. So Orica had just a couple of months time to develop a new LMP1 prototype for the new regulations. The result was the Rebellion R1, so a car which was designed by Orica for Rebellion. Although they developed the car in record time, they were still not ready for the first race of the season 2014 in Silverstone and Rebellion had to compete with their old Lola cars for a last time. After solving first teething issues, the R1 became a reliable race car. In the meantime, Orica used their gained knowledge of the R1 to develop the Orica 05, an LMP2 car for the 2015 season. The Orica 05 used the same monocoque, shared many parts with the Rebellion R1 and was also 1900mm wide instead of 2000mm like the other LMP2 cars. So Orica already had experience since 2014 with the chassis and could improve the car even more through 2015 and 2016. For 2017 the LMP2 regulations changed significantly. To make the sport more accessible and to reduce costs, only four approved chassis manufacturers were allowed. Dallara, Ligier, Riley and Orica. Only the 4.2 liter naturally aspirated Gibson V8 was allowed from now on. And the width of LMP2 cars was reduced from 2000 mm to 1900. Because of that, everyone had to design a brand new LMP2 car for the 2017 season. Everyone but Orica, who could convince the FIA to just update their existing Orica 05 since it already has a width of 1900mm. So in early 2017 the four new LMP2 cars hit the track. The Riley Mark 30, the Dallara P217, the Ligier JSP217 and the Orica 07. So while the others had brand new cars to adapt to, Orica already had 3 years of race experience with this chassis in Le Mans and other series and only had to deal with a new engine and an update. Additionally, these 4 new cars were homologated for 4 years and were only allowed to have one large update within this time, so it's hard to catch up. Now after the first few races the ACO and FIA assessed the performance of the four new cars to determine what and how much the manufacturers are allowed to develop. The Orica 07 was dominant from the very beginning and the officials did not allow Orica to develop this car any further. All others had a lot to catch up. Dallara misjudged the downforce level of the P217 and brought two less downforce to Le Mans, so they were not competitive and were allowed to improve their low downforce aero package. Also, the car was quick but quite peaky, so it's hard to drive for amateur drivers. Ligier's aerodynamics was not competitive and they were allowed to redevelop both aero packages. Also, while the others used a well-proven X-Track gearbox, they used a Hewland gearbox which isn't as reliable and frequently created problems. And the Riley was just far behind the others. It didn't just have far more drag, they also came up with an outdated suspension design which was hard to set up and hard to drive. So ACO and FIA allowed Riley to even develop a completely new car, so they could catch up with Orica. Later on, Multimatic took over the project and could improve the suspension issues, but the car stayed not competitive. So the Orica was fast on every circuit. 
in the mall and anywhere else. It has low and high downforce aero packages which work well and the car is easy to set up. In addition to that, the car has a wide operating window and is easier to drive. So even if a smaller team doesn't have the perfect setup, they can still have good results. Another huge advantage was that many of their customer teams, which ran an Orica 05, could just buy the 07 update package instead of a new car and compete in the new LMP2 series. And because Rebellion R1, Orica 05 and Orica 07 were pretty much the same car, there were many spare parts out there and wherever you go there's always one of them at the track. Smaller teams can copy setups from bigger teams and be successful quicker instead of dealing with Ligier's gearbox issues or the other aero issues. In addition to that, Orica's build quality is pretty good and so many customers decided for an Orica 07. So Orica has high sales numbers, there are a lot of experiences and setups for all tracks all around the world, many cars are running in different series, there is much data available and since the whole LMP1 class is now using Orica 07 only, they can claim to win every race, which is great for marketing. So if anyone is looking for an LMP2 car, the Orica 07 is the way to go, even today. So I hope you liked this little insight into the world of LMP2 racing and please consider to become a B-Sport Club member for more videos like this. See you at the next one.